There's a binomial expansion, bit of a messy one. I wonder if you can find out what is the term in that expansion that is independent of x. Or another way of saying that is what's the constant term, okay? Most of the terms are going to have some x's floating around in there, so they'll be variable. But there will be one term, and only one, that's a constant, has no x's in it, independent of x, okay? So there's kind of like two, three skills in there. They're all here, all the things you need. So I want you to have a stab at it, and then I can shut up and get out of your way. So what I've begun is to say, well, one of these terms will be the constant term. One of them will be independent, but I need to know which one it is. So in order to work out which one it is, I need to know what each of the terms looks like. So that's why I go to the general term. Okay. So if I'm looking for the kth term, what is the kth term? I've already started writing it. What else needs to get added onto this thing? Can you take it? Wait, isn't it? A to the, the kth term is going to have some number of these in it and some number of these in it, right? But term 1 goes n to 0. Yep, and that's okay. That's term 0. Yeah, so I'm including a 0th term in my scheme. There will be a term 0, the 0th term. And that's because, as we know, it's because of the way Pascal's triangle is that you always have, on the n throw, you have n plus 1 items, right? So I just designate the first, first item as term 0. Okay, yeah. um, so maybe I should just rather than say first term, I'll say term zero, zero or term k. Yeah. Um, could you just say let the um, the power of one of the terms equal to n? Let it equal to n. Yeah, I will in a second. I will in a second, but I need to know what I'm going to let equal to that, um, right? I chose the um, the one on x um, one on x squared. Because that, yeah, because you don't have to multiply the next root by two. Oh. Okay, I see what you mean. All right, now let me write this next line, and maybe I'll try and explain what's going on because I don't know if any, everyone's following. Because no. I'm only barely following. Okay, um, you remember, right? I can write this thing as like there's going to be thirteen terms, right? Thirteen terms. I could write the first one as this to the power of twelve, and then the next one will be to the power of eleven and ten, etc., and then climb down. Or alternatively, I could write it in reverse order. I could write this thing as the first term to the power of 12, and then that to the power of 11, and 10, etc. The difference is whether you start from here or start from there. It's no big deal, okay? So which one do you choose? Now I'm just going to start with the most obvious one. That's the first term. So I'm going to say there will be that thing to the power of k, and then there will be this thing to the power of 12 minus k. Do you see that? Do you see where I've got that from? That's this thing here, except my a and my b are uh, this and this. Does that make sense? Okay. Now what I want to do is, for some particular value of k, these x's and these 1 on x squareds will exactly cancel out. Right? That's what I want. Okay? So I need to tease out where the powers of x are in there. Okay? Now I think this is just probably the most systematic way to do it. To tease out the power of x's, I'm going to take away all the constant things. So I already know n c k is a constant thing. It's a number of some kind. In here is a 2 to the k and an x to the k, yes? So the 2 to the k is the constant part, and then the x to the k is the variable part. Okay, the part I want to cancel out with here. I'm just going to keep on going. There's a negative 1 to the power of 12 minus k. That'll be constant. It would either be 1 or negative 1. And then lastly, there's this guy. So to help me out a little bit, I'm going to write that in negative index notation, okay? To the power of 12 minus k. Right, now I'm almost there. I just need to get things in the right order. So you've got uh, one, two, three terms that are constant. And so the terms that really matter to me right now are this one and this one. Okay? I should combine their powers together because I want the power to be zero. zero. That would mean there's no x's there. Right? So let's have a look. I'll just write down all of this constant fluff first. Uh, here we go. Do, do, do. I think I got them all. Okay. Now have a look at this guy. What's this going to be? This is going to be 2k minus 24. 2k minus 24. And then there's a k there. So if I multiply this together, I'm going to get 3k minus 24. Yeah, did I do my indices right? That is the general term. Okay. But what I want is to set this thing to be x to the 0. Right? So you can see it's some pretty straightforward number crunching here. And that's what I've done. Does that make sense? Okay. And you should think about it. Oh, of course it must be, right? Because you see how you've got more x's here 
and less x is there. So I've got to get further into my series of terms in order for these guys to cancel with these. Okay? So I've done that, but what do I do with this number to actually answer the question? Yeah, so the question was, what's the greatest coefficient? So remember how I sifted out all of this constant fluff because I was like, well, this is the bit I'm interested in. But now this is the bit I'm interested in, right? I know this is going to be equal to 1. So I'm just going to say, here's the actual term, right? So therefore, the constant term is... And I really should have written that as a 12. Sorry, guys. Um, whatever 12 choose 8 is times 2 to the 8 times negative 1 to the 4. Looks like my negatives will cancel. 2 to the 8 is uh, 256. What's the other bit? Someone give me a number. Uh, It'll be B. Four to wait, really? That's it? Oh, wait, do you want the whole the number? The whole number, oh. yeah, sorry. So 495 what? times 256. Bam, there we go. Huge number. Of course it is, because 12 choose 8 is a big number, and so is 2 to the 8. 